day everybody, it is Klaxon here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe for more Attack on Titan videos. I am so excited because Attack on Titan took a break last week, just a one week break, but where they left it uh, was kind of a really big deal. So I'm really excited that Attack on Titan's coming back, and if you guys don't know, let me just explain the format, but this is going to be my big moments reaction, and then after we're going to do a discussion with screenshots. If you guys want to see the full reaction, it is up for $10 patrons, that is a timer and subtitle reaction of my full reaction to the episode but this will be like the big moments the spicy moments and then we will uh talk about it let's just get into it let's go oh he's like threatening him he's like we wouldn't want a titan shifter to turn into a titan in this housing building yeah directly above us oh my god aaron <laughs> falco's like oh well i think i'm gonna go and aaron's just like no Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, wait. What if that's somebody in disguise? Oh, no. She knows because she has the memories, right? No, 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 no. This is somebody that we know. This is like, oh, my God. What if that's like Armin? We haven't seen Armin in a long time. Uh-oh. They're all uniting against Aaron! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! So we just picked a brand new enemy for them to go for! Oh no! Oh no! And he just grows his foot back! Oh Falco, I'm so sorry, sweetie! <laughs> That bloodline is now an Aaron. Damn. Oh. Crazy. See, they aren't so different. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. Oh, and now he sees that it's just like people. Because he's. Aaron's just calling out that it was, yeah, it was all just propaganda. But now what happens? Now what do we do? It has. It wasn't about saving the world, it was about saving his ass, right? Oh. No, they're gonna join hands and they're gonna be okay. Oh no! But Aaron, there were people! Oh, they joined hands! Uh oh. Oh my god, what the fuck? All 
right, guys, let us get into the discussion now. I, I kind of want to talk about the episode at the beginning a little bit, though, like just generally how I feel about it. Uh, it was crazy. It was very emotional. I'm very surprised at where it's gone, because if you guys have been watching my past couple analysis, I had a very naive theory that Reiner and Falco would join Aaron and defect from the military, and they would go against Marley, and the Eldians would be free, and like Marley would be taken down as an oppressor, and they'd all live happily ever after. That doesn't seem like that's what's happening anymore so we will get to that but yeah I just wanted to briefly mention that I I literally do not know where we're going from here like the tables have turned in such a way that I did not expect and I do have analysis obviously on the scenes but in terms of theories about where the end game is for all this no idea completely no idea just gonna be honest because that was my end game theory before and now I'm just sitting here and I'm just like oh Oh no, because on the surface level, right, I don't think that this tr is true at all, but some people may look at this episode and be like, oh, Reiner's the protagonist now and Aaron's the antagonist, right? I don't like using the word villain, but some people would probably say that too, like, oh, Aaron's the villain now, Reiner's the hero, ha, ha, ha. And I think the episode actually made like a meta, like, poke at that, like Aaron being like, ah oh, yes, I'm the bad guy now. Like I think that that was supposed to be sarcastic and sort of a like wink wink to the audience that things are not as black and white as that. There's a lot of gray area here. There's a lot of interesting things, but on the surface, like emotionally, do I feel like that Aaron is now kind of the antagonist while Reiner and Falco and uh, the Titan Shifters in Marley, so like um, Porco and Peck, like them, like do I kind of feel like they're the protagonist now? Like a little bit, I kind of do. And so like emotionally, that's how I feel. But analysis wise, I know that there's more to it and we'll talk about uh, what there is more to, I guess. And so let's talk about this conversation first. I'm glad that they brung this scene back with the man who told them his story and then, you know, uh, did the bad thing that we can't talk about on YouTube. And so I feel like that this conversation is indicative of both Reiner and Aaron's mindset because Annie says I bet he wanted someone to forgive him whereas Bertolt says I think he wanted to be judged by someone and so I think that that is supposed to be metaphorically representing the two mindsets of Aaron and also Reiner. I think that in this case Reiner does ask for forgiveness so I think that I think it could be both though you can ask for forgiveness and want to be judged and so I feel like that both of them are doing that except I don't think that Aaron is sorry I don't think he's sorry for what he's about to do. I think that he's just, you know, opening up about why he has to do it. Whereas Reiner, on the other hand, I think that he is sorry and he wants Aaron to judge him. I think that there could be both of those things there. But yeah, I think that Aaron is not sorry, whereas Reiner is sorry, but both of them maybe are having this conversation so they can judge each other or so they can be judged by each other. And so I feel like that, especially because was to be judged by someone played over the scene, that is what it's supposed to mean. Then after this, uh, we have the intro and I skipped over that. Now here's something very interesting. I'm starting to think that there's like a mole or like a traitor like within the military or something and so let me explain why, okay? I have a couple things. First of all, uh, can we just talk about how dead inside this man looks? I talked about it in my reaction but he just looks like so, like his mirror reflection, I don't know how intentional that was, his mirror reflection looks like the man has seen a ghost. Like he knows what he's about to do will change the entire world like he is so nervous and I feel like that on the outside he looks kind of stern actually even though he is sweating but I feel like that the mirror could be more representative of how he is on the inside like on the outside he's trying to be like, Ugh. like he's trying to put on a brave face he's trying to get it together his eyebrows are like Ugh, right and, but on the mirror side you can tell that from the look in his eyes he just looks so dead on the other side like I don't know if that was intentional or not but that's what I was thinking so here's the thing this lady I'm a little suspicious. I feel like that she knows something, but I'm not sure how because she doesn't stick around, okay? All of these influential families and clans and people are here watching this play, but she fucks off. Like, that is so suspicious, right? It's almost like she knew that a bunch of people were gonna be slaughtered, and so she was like, eh, I don't wanna sit around here, right? And so I'm very suspicious of not just this lady, but just of somebody knowing what is going on and relaying that information to her, if that makes sense. I feel like that she, I don't know, just her leaving. We'll talk about it. I hope I'm not a bother. I just came to see your face. No, you look courageous. My whole clan knows how brave you are. So this is just a kind of a weird conversation because the way she was looking down, I was like, oh, does she kind of like him? Does she kind of, <laughs> does she kind of like Willie? Like I thought that this was almost like romantic because of how she was like looking away or something. 
something like she had romantic feelings, but I don't think that that's it. But yeah, I feel like this conversation is so important. Um, because then she's just like, all right, guys, like, let's head out. And I'm just like, well, wait a minute. Everybody is here. Why are you leaving? Why are you leaving, lady? Anyway, then we have the scene with Aaron where he is basically threatening Reiner. He's like, there are so many people above this housing unit that we are under. Like I said that in the reaction too. You see how he points? The housing unit directly above us. And then he shows the blood on his hand. And that's a threat. That's like, I will transform it any minute. And Aaron has become just so calculating and manipulative. And it's just like the look in his eyes, like he looks dead inside too. And you know what this is reminding me of? Like, I'm just going to be honest. Okay. I don't care about the hate that it will bring me. I was not crazy about Aaron until this season. Okay. Like I liked Aaron. I didn't hate Aaron. I didn't hate him. But was I more interested in characters like Mikasa and Levi and, and Annie and Reiner? Like, was I more interested in them compared to Aaron? Yes. Like, I felt like that for a while. Okay, don't come for me. Aaron was the least interesting part of the show compared to some of the other characters. Like, character-wise, obviously Aaron has a function in terms of the plot and in terms of what they're doing. But in terms of actual personality, I did not find Aaron to be the most interesting. Now, I'm like 100% on Team Aaron, and you know why? Because he's starting to remind me of other characters that I simp for, okay? Lelouch, Light Yagami. Obviously, Lelouch is more theatrical, and Aaron is more cold and serious in this scene. But what I mean is, is that character archetype, the character that is kind of a little like villainy but you're following right like Lelouch like like Yagami like they do the bad things but you love them because they're sort of cold and manipulative and calculating and they have charm to them too is Aaron charming like Lelouch to me not yet could he be maybe but I'm sort of thinking like this is basically the 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 evil part of Lelouch I guess like put into like one character that's how I'm sort of thinking of Aaron right now because he doesn't necessarily like, Aaron has not charmed me yet. I'm not simping for Aaron, but I do like the personality traits that he has in this episode and in this scene. And again, I think that these were personality traits that he really had all along. He just hadn't grown up yet. I think that that's a key to this, is that people, I feel like people may be like, oh my god, this is character assassination. Like, not my Aaron. My Aaron would never do this. I don't think that that's true. I think that Aaron always had this festering inside him, and now he's just matured similar to Reiner. Like, this whole conversation is about them being the same, and we'll get to it, but he's saying that he's the same as him, and I think that what people were hitting the nail on the head on, because I don't know if you guys know, but after my discussion, I go read uh, the Reddit. Like, I read the, the Reddit thread about this specific episode, and I see what people are thinking, because I was really confused at first. I was like, why did Aaron make this point of saying that there were good people here, and then go up and slaughter all of them? And somebody made a very good point that Aaron understands that there are good people here, but similar to Reiner and Annie, they knew that, but they continued to do what they were doing anyway, because they were soldiers. And I think that Aaron sees himself as a soldier who is doing what needs to be done for the sake of his side, right? And so I feel like that there's a message here that Aaron is now not any better than Reiner and Annie were. And in fact, Aaron actually understands why Reiner did what he did because now Aaron must do the same thing. Reiner knew that there were good people on the island, but they were still, you know, him and Annie, they were still going around doing their mission because that was their mission. And so I feel like that Aaron's characterization now is all of that festering anger has manifested into this person personality where he will do what he needs to be done because that is the vow that he has made. That is how I personally see it. And that's why even though he acknowledges that there are good people here, he did it anyway. He killed all those people, I'm assuming, when he transformed. And it's not that he didn't care but he is almost isolating his actions from his feelings in order to do them and do what he thinks needs to be done, right? And I feel like that that is sort of where we're going. Uh, and so, yeah, he basically threatens Reiner and Falco's just like, ah, <laughs> like, I think I'll head back. And I think that Reiner sees that something's wrong. And so I feel like he would get help. Like, I feel like he wouldn't go back and just sit down. Like, I feel like he knows that something is wrong about this. And that's why he's like, um, I'm just gonna leave, <laughs> right? And obviously Aaron's not gonna let him do that because that would not be a good idea because Falco would probably tell. You should stay here and listen and I feel like that this isn't only to keep Falco here so he doesn't get help but it's to genuinely listen to what both of them are saying and what both of them have experienced. The truth about the island, the truth about the military, and the truth about
about who Reiner and Aaron are as people and what Falco could one day feel or even become, you know, like, I feel like that that is the reason why he asked Reiner to say, it's not just like, oh, I can't let you leave or else you're gonna tell on me. It's also the idea that Falco should listen to this because they didn't know this when they were kids and it was too late for them. Reiner was this indoctrinated child and now that he knows, it's almost too late for him. Like, Reiner is going through all of this internal turmoil as we've seen with last episode and even the episode before that. That Reiner is going through all of these feelings and he never knew because of how they were brought up in a sense and so now Falco should listen to this before it is too late for Falco like it's almost too late for Reiner I hope that that makes sense to you guys so yeah so this lady's just here like oh now shall we leave and I'm just like why does she know that it's time to leave? Like, why wouldn't she stay and watch? Like, did she already know the truth? Was she tipped off that something bad was gonna happen? Because all these people are dying, right? And that's the thing, is that you have, like, every newspaper that matters, every influential family in the world. Like, I feel like that this incident is gonna throw the world into chaos. Like, I feel like this one incident because if all these people die, like if all the newspapers die who's gonna report on this who took the picture right if all the cameras are destroyed who took the pictures of willie like the word never gets out and so i feel like that chaos is the theme here but this lady obviously she got away but I feel like that something's going on here. I feel like that she didn't just have intuition to leave. I feel like that there's a leak inside of the military. And I'm going to explain my theory in a minute. Um, I think that this conversation was interesting. At first I was like, wait, who is she talking to? And then I realized that this is actually Annie's dad. And so he is saying Annie is alive. She promised she would come back. I hope that we're getting there because Annie has been locked in a chunk of ice <laughs> or crystal, whatever you want to call it. She has been locked in a chunk of crystal for literally years at this point like years for her but also years for us right and so I just want to see Annie I I really I really want to see Annie that's basically all I have to say about that to think war will be declared in the internment zone of all places and so the military people they're keeping an eye out I just thought that that was sort of an interesting line it reminded me a lot Again, if you guys have watched Code Geass, of a very specific thing that happens in Code Geass, you guys probably know. I don't even need to tell you. I don't want to spoil people because I think that Code Geass is a show that's like 10,000% worth watching and you should watch. If you like what's going on in this particular season of Attack on Titan, you will like Code Geass. I think that's a fair thing to say. And so you see all of the newspapers and all of the families and all of the Titan shifters. Like, this just seems like the perfect place to strike because everyone can be picked off in this one area and in this one fight. Falco and Mr. Braun aren't back yet, so let's talk about this man, okay? This is Armin, right? <laughs> this has to be Armin, and people are like, Armin was so short before, how did this happen? It's like, it's been four years, like, everyone's grown up, like, you saw how Reiner was, and then how Reiner is now, like, how Reiner has grown up, like, I think that this is fair, like, he could add a growth spurt, and he also has the Colossal Titan, so that could have messed with his genes a little bit, like, imagine that, imagine you stop growing, okay? You're, like, seven. I don't know how old Armin's supposed to be. They're like, they're like 17 when they got the Titan. I don't know. And now you're like 25 and you just like have a massive growth spread. I know for some people that happens, but I couldn't imagine at my age of being 21, just suddenly like, Whoa! like I'm five foot two. Okay. Like if I just woke up one day and I was like five foot eight or something, like, I don't know how I would function in my life. Like that would just be, anyway, I just thought that this was interesting. I think that this is Armin, like 10,000%. I have no, I have no doubts about it. I just think that it's him. And he also has a very similar haircut to Armin, if you do see his hair. Now, what was interesting about this scene is that you can't see Zeke's eyes. And I know that you get, like, sometimes you just can't because he has the glass, but I feel like that this is on purpose. And here's why. I put forward the idea that Zeke is the mole. And I had this whole thing, okay, a couple discussions ago. My theory was that Zeke turned in his parents on purpose, that he was never brainwashed. He only gave the illusion that he was brainwashed. He turned in his parents on purpose so his parents could go in and take the Titan powers like inside of the wall. And it was this whole plan from the very beginning that Zeke has just been like lying in wait and just waiting for the day, right? He's just been waiting for the day and now the day has come. And that would also explain 
why the commander and why Willie, like, he, Zeke has, like, helped orchestrate all this somehow, right? And that would also explain why that lady, like, ran off, right? Like, Zeke, uh, we don't think that Zeke has any connection to that particular lady, obviously. But I'm sort of wondering, like, if there's a mole, why would it not be Zeke? Like, he could have just been pretending. I feel like that he was just pretending the entire time to be this brainwashed little kid, and it was actually all a part of the plan. He sent his parents away so they could be rescued by that guy and then his both of his parents were supposed to get sent to the wall but obviously like the guy it took a little too long and it was too late but his dad still got to go into the wall still got to do what they were going to do steal the founding titan powers and it was all a part of the plan that's my theory and i have a reason for this and here's why okay something doesn't make sense to me right here we'll get back to that in a minute because we got to go back to, <laughs> to this screenshot but there's something that specifically happens in that scene where zeke and the others are being led away that is making me think that he was the mole and like something is going on to that effect. Let's talk about this. Same reason you did. Don't you get it? The same reason you did because I had no other choice, right? And so that is in response to why Aaron has come to the island. And so similar to how Reiner had no other choice but to go back Aaron has no other choice but to come here in the first place. And so I really like this scene because this is like mentally destroying Reiner. Like this is like breaking him. He is freaking out. And I really like seeing that, especially with what we know Reiner was going to do a couple episodes ago. You hear that, Reiner? Isn't that why you destroyed the wall? So I like how the play is sort of leading into their conversation, right? Like here's the propaganda that everyone was fed. And then Aaron is saying, oh, that's why you did it, right? Because you were fed the propaganda. You guys were trying to save the world. Uh, and so I feel like that that's a really good, like, I feel like that this was just a really good scene. And Reiner says later, like, okay, like, yeah, but also no. Like, Reiner finally admits that part of the destroying, like, part of destroying the wall was also for his own selfishness. And so in that regard, Reiner is not that different than Willie. Willie has been sitting here with this knowledge, or at least his family has, and they've been living this lavish life because of this lie and not disclosing this lie, and it's almost a selfishness. Like, the reason why Willie has not gotten involved, or the Tiber family in general has not gotten involved, involved before this point was because of selfishness and I think for Reiner it's almost the same thing where it wasn't just about saving the world anymore but Reiner had personal ambitions and he wanted those ambitions to be realized and that's why he destroyed the wall so I think that there's a theme of selfishness going on between Willie and Reiner as well now let's talk about that scene I wanted to talk about okay you're wanted at the gate why I cannot figure out I cannot figure out why Armin. <laughs> We're just gonna say it's Armin. I, I, even if it's not Armin, it's Armin, okay? I don't understand why. He would send Reiner away on his own. That, to me, does not make any sense. Like, why just take them all and then trap them instead of letting Zeke be free to fight against Eren? This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. He's basically sending him on his own, and if Zeke suspects something, Zeke can just, you know, like, go wherever, right? Zeke, if he thinks that this is fishy, could go call for help. So why not? Because we know that they're in a Titan trap later, that they're in inside of that pit and so why not put Zeke in the pit too? Why send him to the gate alone where there's no one around unless there's two other people at the gate waiting for Zeke and they will capture him before Zeke can make any sort of fuss. But I think that this is just really risky, right? What I'm imagining is Mikasa and Levi are just sitting by the gate and they're about to kidnap Zeke. Or Zeke is the, like, the mole. He's the one who has been playing, uh, playing both sides all of this time. And that, but I don't know, like, in terms of Zeke's past actions, though, that kind of doesn't make sense. But at the same time, wouldn't it make sense? I don't know. Like, that's my current theory. Why send him to the gate by himself when you could trap all three of them in the pit? That's what I can't figure out yet. Unless, again, there are two more people waiting by the gate. But this is risky anyway. Because even if Mikasa and Levi did just, like, I don't know, put a bag over his head and lead him into a dark alley. I'm just saying Mikasa and Levi, it could be anyone. Like, there is still the possibility for him to transform. And I think that's just so sketchy. I think that's really sketchy. Mm, yeah, so those are my feelings about it. This is why I'm just suspicious of this whole scene. Sending him alone instead of trapping them with them three opens up the possibility that Zeke could transform and ruin their whole plan. Unless that's part of the plan. 
so I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's like this way, you two, right? And so he's taking them, but not Seek. I don't know. I just find that very suspicious. I find it all suspicious. And I did sort of have that idea since a couple discussions ago. I was like, what if Zeke is just playing both sides? He just, this was all an orchestrated plan. Everyone thinks that he betrayed his parents, but really he wanted him to get sent to the wall. He wanted his dad to get sent to the wall so his dad could do the thing. And it was rebellion like the entire way through. Like they were planning to rebel the entire way down, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I feel like I've seen you somewhere before. Where are you from? So he has a cover story, but I think that this is Armin. This is totally Armin. And we get a good look at his face. Like, not a great look, but we get a look at his face later. But anytime somebody's face is covered, especially this season, it seems like it's supposed to illustrate that that person is someone we know. So clearly we know this person, whether they're Armin or someone else. Is Pick, like, flirting with him? Because <laughs> I'm kind of like, oh, what? And so I thought that she hugged these guys because she gave them some secret message like, help us, we're in trouble. Because I feel like that she's suspicious. I don't know if that's what she did, but that's my current theory for this scene. Because she runs up and she hugs them, and clearly it seems like that these guys are Marleyans, but they kind of, like, have the hots for her. At least it seems like that to me. And so this could either be one of two things. This could be, like, a throwaway joke to lighten up the episode that genuinely, uh, it's supposed to show two things. Like, first of all, that all these guys are in love with her, but also, not all all the Marleyans like despise the Eldians. All of these guys seem to like her. They seem to be fond of her even in a friendship way if not a relationship way. And she even says like oh we should build the bond. They're the ones that ride the war titan into battle. We should be friends. And it doesn't seem like that they're like disgusted by her. They're like you know like ah oh, Eldian get off me. Like they don't have that attitude. And so I think that this scene functions in the same way that those two guards that were like knowing that Falco and Gabby liked each other last episode, like, I think that they have the exact same function. It's to show that not all of the Marleyans hold this attitude and that some of the soldiers are actually friendly. But I wonder if she was like, help us, right? And so, because he looks stunned, right? So I wonder if she told him something like, we're fucking screwed, <laughs> we're being kidnapped, because I feel like that she sort of knew that something was wrong. That's just my opinion. And so then they get dropped into the hole. So I'm guessing that the cities just had these holes installed in case of something like this because obviously there was the war right so I'm wondering because I'm just like well Armin didn't dig a big well for this specific occasion this had to have been here uh for this specific purpose I don't know how he knew about it though that's kind of interesting now let's get back to them what's going on here why is Chief Braun so scared and so I'm just like oh Falco's figuring it out uh if it's more than four they met on Paradise Island so Falco's piecing it together and I really I really enjoy Enjoy this scene and you see how Reiner's like freaking out right however the truth is somewhat different so I think that this was like amazing in passing down the Warhammer Titan the Tiber family inherited its memories uh, I will now reveal the truths we learned for the first time ever it was neither Helios nor the Tibers who ended the Great Titan War so here's the thing didn't somebody say was it the commander or was it Willie no Willie said that he wanted to come see the statue and I think the commander said that the statue was hollow inside and so what if that being hollow inside was a reference to the fact that Helos was like not real like what if the statue being hollow was a metaphor for the fact that it was a almost like hollow sentiment you guys understand what I'm saying I know that that's a confusing thing to say but it's almost like the statue being hollow showed that there was no depth to it that it was just a cover story that it wasn't real because it was hollow on the inside it's like it looks like a powerful statue on the inside but there's nothing actually there there's nothing on the inside so I wonder like what if the commander like did all this I don't know what if the commander knew is what I'm saying. The one who ended the fighting and saved the war was King Fritz. So we sort of knew this. Like, we knew that Fritz did not want to fight anymore, but we didn't know why. Like, I guess that now we know that this is the reason why. He anguished over the Eldian Empire's vicious history, tired from the endless infighting, and above all, he was pained by the endless oppression of Marley. When he inherited the founding titan, he schemed with the Tiber family, and they fabricated a Marleyan hero. So, yeah. There was none. There was no Marleyan hero at all. His name, he 
Helios. The king moved as many Eldians as he could to the island and closed the gates. He claimed that if they were threatened, thousands of titans would be unleashed as revenge. However, this was never his intention. King Fritz made a vow renouncing war so his ideology would be inherited. Because of this, Carl Fritz's ideology has been passed down and the titans have never left the island to attack. Now let's talk about this. I think that this is interesting because we knew that the king had renounced war, but I feel like that a lot of people were frustrated because they were like, how can the king keep choosing not to fight even though his subjects are in danger? But in the next lines, they actually go into that. They talk about how he resigned himself because at this point, if they were attacked by Marley, it would be retribution. I don't agree with that at all. Like, you can't have all these innocent people pay with their blood and their death the wrongs of the ancestors. But his idea was basically, hey, if they come for us, I'm not fighting back. That was his opinion on it. And I still think that frustrates me. I still think it frustrates me that the king would still not defend his subjects even though things have gotten so dire that he would just resign himself to everyone dying. Like, that still bothers me, but that's his... We now know the reason behind his intentions, and that's why even, like, a character like Historia, who I think that at first was committed to the fighting, like, if she ate Eren and got the powers back, I think that she would also be possessed by that vow despite her difference in personality to Fritz, in my opinion. Like, I think her personality is different, right? His desire for peace. Peace was all he wanted. But if Marley grew strong and came to take the founding titan or his life, he would accept it. He believed the sins of the Eldians were so grave they could never be atoned for. And so that's what I don't agree with, is that he would just let them, well, he said let them take the founding titan power. So I guess that that is different. But at the same time, in him taking the founding titan power, uh, innocent people are going to die. And so that's what I disagree with. It seems like that he resigned himself to him dying or the founding titan as a power being wiped out if the Marleans came for it. But by accepting that, you also to accept the fact that your people will be dead, basically, will die. Because Reiner and their operation to get the power back caused the death of innocent people. They didn't just sneak in and go after the founding titan power. They also killed people in the process. And so yeah, like this is just explaining how the king feels, but I don't like it. And so until that day of retribution, let me savor a brief paradise free of conflict within the walls. And that's interesting too, because we know that the walls really weren't free of conflict. Like there was a lot of internal politics and you had the interior military and the fake king. Like there was a, just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I think that this is very political as well though, because if the founding titan power went to Historia, let's say, or the king was just like still in power, whoever, the king or the queen, they were still upholding the vow of peace and the powers did not go to Eren. This wouldn't be happening though still, right? Because this is all a political ploy by Willy in a sense to bring world peace to get everyone to fight against a common enemy and that common enemy happens to be Eren and so even though it seems like that he's doing something for the good of the world for the world to unite against this common enemy to all save each other because if the colossals come out that's basically the end of the entire world as we know it like even though they say that at the same time if peace was still being upheld within the walls I don't know if Willy would ever say this though, right? Because there would be no common enemy to fight against. If the King of the Walls won't attack, why do they say Paradise Island is a threat? Like say theoretically that this information got out to the public, they all believed that the king would attack one day. Like, that is why they've been worried and they're doing this to get the founding uh, titan power back. But if peace was still being upheld and that was exposed to the world, wouldn't they just leave Paradise alone? And so that's why I'm saying that Willie's intentions seem to be for the purpose of uniting the entire world at the expense of the people on Paradise. Like, I wonder... If they kill Eren, would they just leave the people on Paradis alone? Because I thought there were ulterior motives. Like, I thought that the whole idea was not just the founding Titan thing, but there was resources on Paradis that the other nations wanted some sort of access to. Like, I feel like that that was also part of it. And so if this information was not exposed, wouldn't they still go after the island eventually? Like, even though they're making Eren out to be the threat now, isn't there still the problem of people living on the island in the first place? Like, 
after Aaron's defeated, they could, I guess, no longer concern themselves with a bunch of colossals coming out to attack them. But then what do you do with the walls and the people that are on the island? Then what happens? Anyway, just some food for thought. I'm not entirely sure uh, what I'm thinking in terms of that, those lines yet. In exchange for our safety, the Tiber family joined hands with Carl Fritz and sold the Eldians to the Marleans. And so that is what I'm sort of thinking too, is like, you knew this all this time and you let them keep going to the island, right? You let all the people on the island die, but he seems to actually feel genuinely sorry about this. We're no more than traitors lavishing and crookedly earned honor. So that's what I was thinking too. And I think that that's also true in a sense of Reiner. Like I think that a lot of what Willie is talking about here is also reflected in Reiner's experience. And I feel like that Reiner uh, feels the same thing as well. Like Reiner knows the truth, but to save his own skin, he hasn't said anything about it. And that's causing the internal conflict. I feel like with Willie, it's the same, except they've been lavishing in this life, this life that they never truly earned. And now he's coming out about it because he feels so strongly about it. And so I feel I feel like that Willie, I feel like that this could be his mindset is that he is thinking that by doing this, it will bring world peace. And so the people on the island or the war that would come out of doing this are a, like, it's basically the needs of the many over the needs of the few. I think that that is Willie's mindset, that he is basically saying, even if those people die, even if the people on Paradis die or like soldiers die fighting against Aaron or what have you, in the end, it will bring world peace. So a few thousand lives are worth the lives of the entire world. This will unify the world for good. So I feel like that maybe he does have a good intention under there. The reason why I stand here willingly part of the sham is because I know our world is in great peril. Um, and so yeah, they're just in the pit while this is happening. Uh, yeah, we'd be squashed to death. Why that scrawny soldier even do it? So I feel like the usage of scrawny here is again another hint that this is actually Armin. Uh, I just, I feel like his Armin was always like that scrawny little kid. Like now he's just a scrawny taller kid, right? I feel like that that could be a hint. I feel like I've seen them before. I feel like that's also a hint. Uh, stand there and watch this is my atonement. Using the power of founding Titan, Carl Fritz erected three walls. And so he's explaining that now there are Titans within the walls, but recently an uprising took place on Paradis Island. King Fritz's peace was undermined by the person who stole the founding Titan. And so they're talking about Aaron. So now we're back to them and Falco's mad about being tricked. And I understand, like if I were Falco, I'd be mad too. And Aaron's saying, I'm sorry, Falco, I needed your help. And I feel like that he's saying that in such a, again, a very cold way. Like Aaron's just very cold for the entirety of this episode. I feel like that he is kind of sorry because obviously Falco is one of those good people that he goes on to talk about. Like ultimately Falco was just a good kid trying to help. So I feel like he actually is a little sorry, but in the grand scheme of things, like, is he that sorry? I don't think so. Like he's just, he's doing what he has to do. And that's the whole thing. Those letters, the ones that you had me sent, what were they? And so Reiner actually, he turns over. I guess I missed it. But he actually looks really scared for Falco in that moment. And so I had this theory that maybe Falco or Reiner would get caught and tried for treason and then something would happen with that. Like say Reiner gets like caught for treason and then they give like Reiner an execution and that execution is Gabby getting to like eat him and take the power. Like I had that theory a couple episodes ago but I feel like that maybe what could happen is Falco gets caught, Reiner takes responsibility, Reiner gets executed. Obviously Falco can no longer be the Titan that inherits his powers, right? Because they're still, even though Reiner covered for him, maybe they're still a little suspicious of Falco and then Gabby gets it and then Falco's like like whole plan of getting the power so he could protect Gabby has like gone up in smoke. That's what I'm thinking. I love seeing the leg grow back. I think that this is such a funny scene. They didn't reach my family, but they did reach my comrades. The threat of Paradise Island is the stampede of millions of colossal titans a rumbling. As I mentioned, the vow renouncing war prevents the king's bloodline from fully using the founding titan. So now his idea is like, Aaron has no such vow, and so that's dangerous. And I think that that's, a, he's actually not wrong. Like, Aaron does have no such vow. And so I wonder if Aaron, I wonder if this is actually the titans like i wonder if they did break the walls i don't know if this is just it, it was unclear to me so you guys can tell me if it's like not a spoiler or anything it was unclear to me whether or not this was a artistic representation of what that would look like or rather if this is actually like aaron is actually descending the colossal titans upon the world right now that was a little unclear to me 
And so I feel like that that would be interesting. Like, what if this is true? Like, what if Aaron did already call the Colossal Titans and it's already starting? I don't know. Like, I feel like that... I don't know. Let's do something about this picture, right? Something about all these titans standing here on, I, I mean, I guess it's just the dirt, but almost like the beach area. And so I'm wondering, like, did all of the titans break out of the walls? Did Eren get that much control over his power? Because we see him call on the titans sometimes, but could he do it to this extent where he actually sets all the titans free and they're already on their way there and war has already started? right? Because I was thinking it it seems sort of unfair for Aaron alone to be going up all of these military people in terms of a fight. Like, if you're thinking about a fair fight, it seems sort of cheap for Aaron to have to go against the Jaw Titan, the Beast Titan, uh, Reimer's Titan, right? Like, there's just so many Titans around. It doesn't seem like, you know what I mean? It would be like a 6v1. Like, how is Aaron supposed to win that? But if these Titans are already on the loose, that would actually make a lot of sense. It's like Willie says, I'm the bad guy. I might just destroy the world. And so I wonder, like, did you do it, Aaron? Did you unlock them, right? And so I felt like that that was almost sarcastic, though. The like, yeah, I'm the bad guy. Like, I feel like that it was sort of a meta point to the audience that things are more complicated than they seem. And that Aaron, he seems like the bad guy and he's definitely doing bad things. But is he the villain? Is he the bad guy? I just don't think so. Uh, but to me, you were the bad guys too. So this is where we're getting into morally gray. Is that maybe A Aaron is the bad guy to the Marleans now, especially, or just the entire world now. But to Aaron, Reiner and them, they were the bad guys. Even though both parties thought that they were doing good. Reiner, um, even though still selfishly, right, we've talked about his selfish reasons, like, Reiner genuinely thought he was saving the world, and on the opposite side, Aaron genuinely thinks that he's, I think that he's protecting his people, right? But at the same time, I feel like that the underlying selfishness of both of them is that Aaron genuinely wants revenge, and that Reiner wanted to make himself look good, and so I feel like that they both were people that had good intentions to start with, but now have been overcome by their, I guess, their humanness and for Reiner that's pride and for Aaron that's revenge. That's my opinion. That day when the walls were destroyed and Titans invaded my hometown, I watched my mom get eaten. Why Reiner? Why was my mom eaten by a Titan? And then Reiner says because on that day we broke the wall. Why did you break the wall? To sneak in during the chaos and see how the king would react. What was your mission? To retake the founding Titan and save the world. I see. If it was to save a world you didn't have much choice. Uh, and so then he goes on to sort of talk about how they they were kids, they were brainwashed, and that's very true. That's what we've seen this entire, like, season is how the kids have been brainwashed into thinking the people on the island are devils. And so I feel like that just like Reiner had this idealization to save the world, so did Aaron. I feel like, in a sense, killing every last Titan, even though it had those underlying themes of revenge for what happened to his mom, it was also, if I kill every last Titan, no one will ever have to suffer by losing losing somebody because of a titan again, right? They both have, on the surface, selfless motivations, but then on the underside, there's a lot more going on there. That's how I uh, sort of see it, right? I'll make you guys suffer and die in the worst way possible. Oh, Aaron's just like, I kind of remember saying that. I really like that this dialogue uh, over here. True, I saw everyone on the other side of the sea as my enemy, but then I crossed the sea. I slept under the same roof as them, ate the same food. Reiner, I'm the same as you. So the same thing that Reiner experienced being inside of the wall and Annie, I think it was Annie being like, why are you so buddy-buddy with them? Like somebody said that that. Uh, and Reiner was just like, hey, like, it's good to keep a cover story. But genuinely, I think that Reiner did feel that to some extent. Reiner realized that these weren't like just devils, that they were almost like basically almost his friends, then he betrayed them. Oops. But you understand what I'm saying that that was the vibe. It was the same vibe. Like, Aaron has slept under the same roof as these people. He hasn't necessarily made a friend, like other than Falco, I guess. But otherwise, he knows that the people here are not all evil. And so Reiner has been internally struggling with all these things since he got back. Like, not just that, but also losing Annie, uh, Bert told his selfish motivate. Like, Reiner has been feeling all these things inside, and I feel like Aaron is feeling the exact same things too, but Aaron has now solidified on what he wants to do, and we'll talk about that. And he says that there are good people here. Like, some of them are jerks, but there are good people. And he looks at Falco, because Falco is one of those good people. But what Aaron sort of follows up with, across the sea, within the walls, it's the same. 
same. But you guys were taught everyone in the walls was a devil. You were children who knew nothing, but it was drilled into you. So that's what I'm saying, right? You were kids. What could you even do? They were brainwashed. And Aaron recognizes that. Right, Ryder? Hasn't that been eating away at you? And it has been eating away at him, right? And so I feel like that that's a really interesting parallel that Aaron and Reiner are not that different. That day when Marcel was eaten, Annie and Bertil tried to turn back and end the mission, but I talked them into it. I made them go in. I wanted to be a hero. I wanted people's respect. It's my fault. And so Aaron actually seems stunned at this, at Reiner's emotion. Your mom was eaten by a titan because of me. And this is also, by the way, it, it oh God, I don't remember what it's called, but this is like the lowest bow you can do. I, yeah, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like in Japanese, there's a certain word for it. And you see it in a lot of like video games, like in Kingdom hearts too. Sora gets down in the same way to like beg for Kairi's safety and Syax is just like lol no. Uh, and so it's the same move. I just don't remember what it's called. Uh, and so you can see that Reiner's ambition got in the way of everything that even though like they were kids going out to save the world but then as they were getting there he continued because of his own selfish motivations and now those selfish motivations are eating away at him I think that Aaron is genuinely surprised like Reiner has had growth <laughs> like Reiner has had character growth and I don't think Aaron expected that considering the Reiner that they you know saw that they saw last I guess you could say I don't think that they expected that at all for Reiner to be this remorseful because I think that Reiner is genuinely sorry. More than anyone, I wish the Eldians were wiped out. Um, and so I think that that was actually Willie saying that? I'm a little confused about that line. Let me know. Um, I'm sick of this of myself. Just kill me. And so that obviously harkens back to what we saw Reiner trying to do the bad things a couple episodes ago. Willie actually says something that is the opposite of Reiner. Reiner is saying just kill me. But at the same time, I don't think Reiner means that. Reiner... Uh, stop doing the bad thing because he saw Falco and he knew that people still needed him, that the kids still needed him. So I feel like that Reiner saying that isn't genuinely true. Like, I don't think that Reiner genuinely thinks that, I guess I should say. But Willie, on the other hand, contrasts that by saying he wants to live, that he still wants to live. And it was because I was born into this world. Uh, and so he's basically saying, I want to live because I need to set things right now, that I must continue to live in order to make up for this and actually tell the world to truth. And so while Reiner wants to die, it seems like Willie actually wants to live as his atonement to actually do the thing to actually help. He's tired of just sitting around. He actually wants to help now. And so that's why he's committed to living. I, that's how I read the line. We are people of different races and nations. However, it is time to join as one and face this dreadful enemy. Lend me your strength, those of you who wish to live. And so I feel like that he wishes to live as well. To those of you who wish for a future, it's him too. If we work together, we can overcome any obstacle in our way. Like I thought, I'm the same as you. I really like this. It's harkening back to the sameness of all these characters and even Willie who isn't a part of this direct conversation. In a sense Willie is because they're reacting to what Willie is saying. Like Willie is a part of the conversation. This is Willie. I want you to join me in the fight against the devils of Paradise Island. Right and so now we sort of see where this is going. It's like okay we're uniting the world against one common enemy, the people on the island, so everyone else can live. Like again it's the needs of the many thing that I talked about earlier. Here and now, as a representative of the Marleyan government, I proclaim, and so this was a, obviously declaration of war. When Aaron says that he keeps moving forward, here's what I think he means. He sees the people, he knows that they're not bad people, he knows that they're just people living their lives, he slept under the same roof, he's eaten their food, but it doesn't matter because his desire, I guess, his need for revenge, his need to continue to go on this path is greater than that knowledge. Similar to how Reiner still did what he did after, like, okay, the initial breaking of the wall, that's one thing. But after they made friends and after they experienced being, like, having this camaraderie together, like, Reiner still continued. And there's a reason for that. And that reason for that continuation was their duty to the mission and as soldiers, in my opinion. So I feel like that what Aaron is saying here is despite seeing all this, despite seeing that there are good people here, I keep moving forward. And to move forward, I must do this. I must sacrifice these lives of the people above me in order to do this. And so I feel like that Aaron has the same attitude as Reiner, but Aaron doesn't feel guilty about it at the moment. Reiner seems to feel guilty over the fact that he continued, over the fact that innocent people on the island suffered. 
and that he could have turned back people like Aaron, right? Like Reiner basically turned Aaron into what Aaron is today. Aaron would never be like this if Reiner never kicked in the wall and Aaron's mom never died. And so I feel like that this is almost the same thing, is that he is going to keep moving forward despite what he has seen, despite knowing that there are innocent people here. He will continue anyway for the sake of this battle, for the sake of this war that he is now um, going on to. And that's very interesting to me. I keep moving forward until I destroy my enemy. So this was just chilling, like this whole expression. And so that's where we get it. It's like, I know there are innocent people people here but my enemies are still here and they must be destroyed and so I found that very interesting and I feel like they're doing super interesting stuff with Aaron's character and I really liked this scene because it makes sense like that was like the festering anger that Aaron always had it was in there and now it's just come to the surface and he's accepted it that he his want to destroy his enemies is greater than the people that may die from that destruction. And so I feel like that this scene was also interesting because you see that Reiner, I didn't get a nice capture of it, but Reiner actually turns to Falco almost to protect him. And so I could see Reiner sacrificing his life for Falco, Falco eating him, and then the whole thing happening, right? But they don't have any of the injection juice. So if Reiner like starts to die now because he's been like crushed by some rubble or something, like, I'm a little confused on how that would work. Maybe Reiner will just like shift after this, right? He'll protect Falco and then he'll start shifting and then Falco will just be like put back put back gently on the ground or something I'm not sure um I feel like that this is like really I don't know I just thought that it was nice that Reiner his concern is still Falco and that is why he wanted to live was for the kids and so now he's using his body to steal Falco because Falco's life is more meaningful than his I think Reiner thinks and then we got this too uh enemy forces of paradise a declaration of war so just as he said it everyone was like is this part of the play like this is very realistic very realistic puppet they got here no obviously people know that something's wrong right here and so yeah I don't think that Willie's getting eaten though I think that Willie will transform and they're gonna have a fight I mean I'm assuming that's him unless one of his family members are in the audience because they said that oh well you can't tell who the titan holder is in order to protect our family so maybe it's not him at all maybe it's the real like Warhammer Titan as one of his family members we don't know but I think that it is him at this point I think that it was him I think that he has the memories directly that it was him all along that he's the shifter but that would be a nice little red herring situation if this guy just dies and then one of the other random family members that we saw they're actually the Warhammer Titan that could be fun very funky fresh of them um either way this guy's either dead or he's the Titan shifter I feel like there's no in between like those are our choices and that is basically it everyone in terms of projection for next week I got no fucking idea I'm just gonna stop <laughs> you know I'm good with analyzing the episode but in terms of theory making I literally have nothing like I'm so all over the place like this was not something I expected I didn't expect Aaron to go this hard I guess is what I should say like I didn't expect Aaron to go full-on again I know there's more to it it's morally gray it's not like that but I didn't expect Aaron to go villain on us basically uh and so I did not account for this and so I have no fucking idea I just think that this episode was wonderful it was amazing it was like perfect it was amazingly done like the show is so interesting now like not that it wasn't interesting before but this is the most interesting and like intellectually compelling to me that Attack on Titan has ever been in my opinion like I never used to really analyze the show like Hunter and I would just react to it that's my recording partner in some of my other videos Hunter and I would just react to it and then we would sort of you know forget about it until next week but to actually sit down and talk about it and see how all the pieces are coming into play it just makes me appreciate the anime so much more but that is all from me guys I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one bye